Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll look at another reason why donating blood is a good idea, because it helps reduce the levels of long-lived toxins in your blood. In this case, perfluoroalkyls and polyfluoroalkyls. These toxins are known as forever chemicals because of their long half-lives. Once they're absorbed, they stay in the body for a long time and are difficult to get rid of. Donating blood seems to be one way to do it. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, the effect of plasma and blood donations on levels of perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances in firefighters in Australia, a randomized clinical trial. Elevated levels of PFAS have been associated with a range of adverse health conditions, such as impaired immune response, thyroid abnormalities, obesity, and increased lipid levels, though the exact threshold is not known. Firefighters were chosen because they were exposed to these substances more often because of the level of PFAS in flame retardant foam, among other things. No interventions have been shown to reduce PFAS levels. This was a 52-week randomized trial. It was open label, so the participants knew which group they were in. There were 285 participants. Firefighters with more than 5 nanograms per milliliter of perfluoro-octane sulfonate, a PFAS, qualified and were split into three groups. Donate up to 800 milliliters of plasma every six weeks, donate up to 470 milliliters of blood every 12 weeks, or not donate either. The paper does not say how many firefighters volunteered, but were rejected because their levels of PFAS were too low. So it is not clear how common this level is. Primary endpoint they were looking for was changes in the serum PFOS and serum perfluorohexane sulfonic acid, PFH excess levels over the course of the trial. Secondary endpoints included changes in other biomarkers in the blood. The level of PFOS was significantly reduced in both blood and plasma donors, but not the observation group. While PFH excess was reduced in the plasma group, but not the blood or the observation group. The conclusion was that blood donation did reduce the levels of PFAS and more research is needed to understand the clinical implications. Some background on perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances. They are known as forever chemicals because of their resistance to degradation. They are widely used synthetic compounds in such areas as Teflon, stain and water resistant material, paints and firefighting foam. There are forms of PFAS which are commonly detected in humans. The half-life of the substances is long. For PFOS, it is 4.8 years. While the half-life in animals is much shorter, so they do not make a good model for conducting studies. And a quick review on donating blood and plasma. Plasma is the liquid part of blood when the red blood cells have been removed. It makes up approximately 55% of the blood. 800 ml of plasma can be donated every four weeks, up to 12 times a year. The Red Cross recommends that blood donation is 470 ml and not more than once every eight weeks. Plasma donation is more complicated than blood donation as it involves extracting the blood, separating out the plasma from the red blood cells, then replacing the red blood cells and other components with neutral saline. There was less good compliance within the plasma group, possibly because of this. Let's have a look at the results. Here is the change from baseline. For PFOS, the plasma group was the most effective, dropping by 2.9 nanograms per milliliter from around 9.5 to 6.6, .6, which is about 30%, whereas blood donation lowered it by 1.1 nanogram per milliliter, or closer to 10%. There was no significant difference in the observation group. For PFH excess levels, the plasma group was significantly lowered by 1.1 nanogram per milliliter, which is about 28%. But the blood donors and the observation group did not see a significant change. For the secondary outcomes, hemoglobin levels were reduced more in the blood donors group. 
Otherwise, no significant differences were observed in lipid profile, thyroid, liver, or kidney function tests. Adverse effects were most frequently noted in the plasma donation group. The toxins in the blood would be transferred to the recipients, but probably at a level at which they already have them. So it would seem to be another good reason to give blood, which has been shown in other studies to be correlated with a longer life. <laughs>